Thanks, David. Chris Thame here, lead engineer at Wireless Group. I'm here to natter on about launching a radio station during a pandemic uh, and a few of the other things we've been up to in the meantime. During the presentation, we'll cover the difficulties, some of the oddities, and a few other things we faced. We'll cover what we'd learnt, and I'll be giving you a short list of do's and don'ts of uh, launching a station in a pandemic. And if we've got time, I'd like to show you behind the scenes sneak peek of our most recent project. So, it's January 28th. Uh, the announcement's made. Times Radio is going to be a thing. A new national radio station. This made us sit up in our chairs somewhat. If you were at last year's TechCon, as David said, uh, we had a presentation on how we move four radio stations uh, into an entirely new building. Uh, since then, we've launched six extra music stations, which is the position we were in when we were told about Times Radio. Um, since... We have plenty of studios, but we also have plenty of stations. Um, so our first problem was where to put a new radio station. Uh, the answer for us was obvious. Um, move two stations out of their existing studios, uh, one down the corridor, one up three floors, uh, and try and keep them all on air in the process. So where's our to-do list? The proposed deadline for Times Radio launch is June. Uh, it would be tight, but it wasn't like a global pandemic was about to hit or anything. <sighs> The first move uh, was TalkSport 2, down the corridor to what are known as Studios 17G and 17H. At this point, we're mid-March, and with a target date of April 7th, I'm thinking there's no way uh, this is possible. I started keeping some productivity graphs for the engineers. And if you look at mid-March, uh, about 20th onwards, there was a totally unexplained spike. Um, I tried to pinpoint the reason behind the jump, but all I could find was something about pub closures, um, which we hadn't even noticed, to be honest. Um, right, first things first, it's moving TalkSport 2. This will be the simplest task, and short of reconfiguring the studio desk and adding some audio delay units, we were able to move them in during a pre-record. In the interest of keeping these studios as flexible as possible, we created some logic that meant when TalkSport 2 were in a pre-record, either during the day or overnight, they could press a couple of buttons and it would uh, take their output directly down to their playout system rather than taking up a studio. This meant the studio could be used for other interviews um, and pre-records, da da da. One down, two to go. Talk Radio, however, was slightly more involved. During the move, we wanted to drastically upgrade their studio, uh, their video and camera systems, the video wall behind the presenter, the whole shebang. Um, they were going live to Facebook, YouTube and Twitter every day in their existing studio, something they wanted to ramp up even more in the new one. We started dismantling the old TalkSport 2 studio. The LED wall behind the presenter was currently a big spinning football, um, which I failed to convince the talk radio program director uh, would work for them, um, which was worth a go. Order the mic arms, monitor arms, uh, everything came off the desk for reconfiguring to make it as streamlined and uh, clean looking as possible. More than ever, the focus was on the visuals. The shape and size of the LED wall was altered so it was more like Talk Radio's existing screen, which meant adding extra panels. The studio was still covered in TalkSport 2 branding, which all needed to be stripped out and replaced. Remember, at this point, COVID had well and truly struck, uh, which brought with it all manner of issues when it came to con getting contractors in, uh, but more importantly, new equipment and spares. This delayed us at numerous points across the project. Here it is looking slightly more complete. The branding still needs some attention and there's only minimal lighting with no cameras to speak of yet. As the LED wall finished off, the producers are able to change the backdrop via a touchscreen panel in the control room, the most frequent change being between daytime and nighttime scenes. And here's the view from the control room. The bulk of the setup was already here, thankfully. Uh, the tasks required were reconfiguring the desk, adding some new sources, uh, general bits and bobs like that, and also integrating the new visual system we were going to be using for Talk Radio Multicam, which we can see here on the back bench of the control room. This bench is occupied by the social media managers. Uh, the screen in the middle is an Apple Mac, uh, enabling us to put FaceTime and Zoom calls to air as visual sources. The social media guys were clearly enjoying their new toy and wanted to get as much practice as possible. The saying, every mic is a live mic, doesn't quite cut it anymore. Some rare footage of me doing some work here, and also the exact point that an engineer realises that a live tally on a PTZ on his desk is indeed a live tally. Talk Radio went live from their new studio on May 18th, uh, and we, with a proposed launch for Times Radio being the end of June, we really did need to get our skates on. Now, the old Talk Radio studio was empty, we could crack on with Times Radio. The breakfast show on Times, unlike Talk Radio, would be a double header, which the studio was not currently set up to do. 
With less than four weeks until launch, a new desk was simply out of the question. Uh, and with COVID being every other word on the news, we just couldn't have people too close in the studio. The solution? Stick a lump of wood on the side of it. Simple. This enabled us to keep the desk the distance between the two presenters and guests and avoid the desk looking too cluttered with the required monitors and keyboards. Everything we did was made a little bit harder by having to keep a limit on the number of people in the studio and control room. Another hurdle was working around the perspex screens required in the control room, which impeded workflow for the tech ops and producers. Here's the secondary presenter position nearly finished with a separate phone box and news production research machine. Before Times Radio, all of our stations used Burley for their news gathering and production. Times Radio joining prompted a discussion on what they would use, and it was decided that News Boss would be the system for them. So that's researching, ordering, waiting, waiting, installing, configuring, and training the staff on a totally new system when you can't have more than three people in the same room. In the interest of social distancing, News Boss's very own Ken Kavana gave lessons to groups of people remotely from his house in Australia, with all of the users distancing the office on their computers. This enabled us to stress test the system and quickly fix any issues that arose during the training. Special thanks to Will Truman on our team for getting us across the line. Here's the main presenter position where you can see News Boss on the left screen. Now for the first show, we were told that they would only need to have two presenter mics, which was handy since we couldn't find any suppliers that had our model of mic in stock. We were already using one of our spares for the presenter mics, so the news that a third mic wouldn't be essential for launch day was a relief. A day before launch, we were told that Boris Johnson would be on the first show. Um, best find another microphone. With monitoring configured and the, pro the, uh, the processor in the transmission chain by 6 p.m. the day before, and our very own Nick Prater dusting his ears off to tweak the Optimod, we were in as good a position as we were going to be. On Monday the 29th of June, Times Radio went live for the very first time. Let's take a look at the first few sentences. Good morning and welcome to a new voice in British radio. It's six o'clock. I'm Asma Mir. And I'm Stig Abel and this is the first ever Times Radio Breakfast. Thank you for your company. So there we go. Uh, later that morning, Boris Johnson appeared on the show with a facial expression similar to mine uh, when I was told he'd be on. Apart from a few behind the scenes issues, the first day was a huge success, editorially at least. Um, the engineers become rather accustomed to the finger buffet and complimentary champagne that was always present at station launches. Yet another thing that COVID had ruined. When asked, Boris summed this up perfectly in this video. You know, this is this is not this has been a disaster, right? Let's not mince our words. Thank you, Boris. Whilst putting things in place to launch this station, the engineers were also working hard on how to make our radio stations as accessible and flexible as possible when it comes to contributors and presenters broadcasting from home. We already had a fleet of comrexes and a few Skype lines, but that's not much use with the amount of studio guests the speech stations would usually have. For this, one of the systems we used was IPDTL, which interfaced directly with our comrex receivers back at base. This meant any contributors or co-presenters could easily open a web link and be connected in high quality to our studios. For Roman reporters, we also implemented Report It, a system from Tyline. All that's required is for the end user to download the app, log in with their credentials uh, and dial into the studio. All of this gave us 25 plus lines uh, into the studios at any one time, meaning that even though some of our radio studios were completely empty, the programs were still crammed full of live presenters and guests. Times Radio also launched with FaceTime and Zoom, two systems that must have been hammered by the world this nine or so last months. Giving guests more options to dial in, especially if they can do it natively from their iPhone, is key to producing reliable audio with quick turnaround for bookings. Having all of these systems at the fingertips of the production staff was a huge confidence booster in such uncertain times. So that's another station on the air. Uh, with plenty of things learnt, I thought I'd summarise these learnings into three quick steps of launching a station in a pandemic. Step one, plan, plan, plan. Try and think ahead as far as possible. I know you would anyway, but I can't emphasize that enough. The luxury of next day delivery for certain items was sorely missed, uh, and many things we took for granted, like cables, microphones, and headphones, being out of stock uh, added delay to everything. Step two, try and be flexible and inventive. Uh, some parts of this are undoubtedly going to go wrong, uh, and it's not going to go how you plan it at all. Uh, you will need to think outside the box here, um, but that doesn't mean it's not possible, and it doesn't mean it won't be fantastic. It just might not be what you had in mind. And probably the most important advice I could give is um, don't do it. Just, just don't do it. So that's the Times Radio part of this chat covered. And if I have another minute or so, I thought I'd sneak in a few pictures of the other stuff we've been working on. If you watch the talk radio coverage of the election night, you may have noticed the studio looking a bit different to their usual one. 
This is because a month before the election, we were tasked with building a new virtual studio for them from scratch. Um, because, hey, why not? The room essentially started as a soundproofed cupboard, uh, which wasn't quite what talk radio boss Denny Morris had in mind. Where did we leave that green paint? A few weeks later, it was a lot greener, with a few cameras dotted around. A star tracking system was installed, uh, so all of the cameras knew exactly where they were at all times, and this could manipulate the virtual reality sets um, behind the presenters when the cameras were moved. This meant that panning shots looked a lot more realistic and alive. Uh, we've, gone, we've gone past a few slides there. But that is okay. Uh, where am I in my script? <laughs> About four hours after we'd stopped drilling the holes in things, we went live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter with Mike Graham at the helm. The man uh, who I have to say, uh, I witnessed eviscerating Kay Burley from Sky News. It is the amendment that makes all the others possible, including freedom of speech. The president says he believes he has a very solid chance at winning. Breaking news, Mike, uh, a huge shift in the odds. We are seeing a move in Florida where it looks as though Donald Trump is picking up a much bigger share of the vote than anybody expected. Uh, Donald Trump now favorite to win the election. Yes, of course. Of course. There we go. So that's me done. It's been a very interesting t uh, year for the team so far. And it's proven to us that even though a global pandemic uh, was happening, it wasn't enough to stop engineers from having a bit of fun and keeping radio uh, and more recently TV alive. A massive thanks to all the technical staff at Wireless Group. Uh, it's never been more of a team effort than it has this year.